You need a drink? Yeah. Yeah, you don't need that on your fingernails. I recently had someone ask the question on a very popular video that I've shared. What are some sacrifices that you and your family have made in order to be a single income household? And while maybe this is just semantics, I don't love the term sacrifice because I think, I believe, I know that there are a lot of people around the world who are making legitimate life sacrifices in order to survive, in order to put food on the table, in order to live from one day to the next. So while I understand the question and I want to address a lot of that today, I just want to clarify and give a disclaimer that these are simply lifestyle swaps. These are not life or death sacrifices. These are not make it or break it types of things that we absolutely are like taking huge risks in order to have this type of lifestyle it is simply a first world perspective on how this is feasible. We are in the United States of America. I know that that plays a part in a lot of things. From country to country, things can be so different. So this is not a one size fits all solution. I simply believe that there are probably people out there, quite a few people out there really, that are in the same position as I was just a few years back, really, really wanting to be home, in the home more, whether that be full-time or part-time, but kind of feeling stuck in the workforce and trying to just show up each day and be faithful to the job that you're committed to while also knowing that like your heart just has this huge draw to be home. And I had that even before I had kids, but especially after I had my two girls, the pull was that much stronger. So I was often looking for content like this to come up with more practical and applicable ways to actually see this become a reality because I had so many doubts over the years if it ever would be a reality. So if that's you and you're here today, welcome. Welcome to anyone who stopped by. I'm so glad that you chose to spend part of your day with me. I just want to touch base on the things that have worked for us over the years and some of the different disciplines and habits that we have implemented, the choices that we have made that make this more possible for us. One of the biggest things that I would say regularly saves us money is simply choosing to eat at home. And even if that's not like a from scratch meal, and even with the price of groceries these days, it is still most often cheaper. And I know that a lot of people argue that it's not, but I would say that maybe they're just making the wrong things at home. Like if you're buying from the frozen section all the time at the grocery store, yeah, it's probably going to be a bit more expensive and you might as well just eat out. But if you're buying simple staple ingredients that come in large quantities and can be used for a lot of different recipes, the ones that are super versatile, then a little bit goes a long way and you often end up having leftovers. And while you might not love leftovers or love the idea of them we're talking about saving money here and that is one way to do it now there are also better ways to reheat leftovers i would say that anytime you have leftovers if you put them on the stove or in the oven you're going to get a more fresh taste than using a microwave and that's just something that our society has completely thrown out the window because of the convenience of a microwave but I would recommend trying that if you are not a fan of leftovers. Now there are times where we will pick up a meal because things are just absolutely crazy that night or we've had a really busy week and we'll order a pizza or something like that. This isn't to say that we never order food from somewhere outside of our own kitchen but it's just to say that on the regular and even whenever we are like if I'm coming home from our half day preschool with the girls and I'm thinking, man, I really don't want to go home and have to put together lunch and like all these things, I still oftentimes will tell myself like, no, we probably just should. Like, it's just better if we go home and save that $10 or whatever it would be for me and the girls to eat out. We live in North Georgia. So again, the price is going to vary depending on where you live, but just making the consistent choice to be disciplined in eating at home has really saved us a whole lot of money. 
Number two would be changing our expectations on the things we have and or the things we buy. Now with this, I'm talking like big purchases. So think your house, your car, that kind of stuff. For us, we purchase used but reliable low mileage vehicles that we do not have to have a payment on from month to month that is huge for us and i know that there are some different opinions on using banks and loans and paying that back even if you do have the money to pay for it now in order to build your credit and like some other things that are way beyond and over my head but for us it just makes the most sense for our month to month budget that we do not have an extra payment as far as our house goes we if you saw my how we make it on a single income video or my videos talking about our story and how we got here then you've heard me say we downsized whenever we went to a single income household we sold our house that we had it was a spec house but we had been a part of building and it was in the community where we met where we went to college it was really wonderful but we felt like we needed to be closer to family and this was just all in God's plan like it worked out absolutely like it should have and with that we ended up cutting our mortgage by like more than half also moving to an area that did not have such high property values so while we might not get such a good resale as we did on our previous home we don't have as high of property taxes we don't have to worry about some of those other things and the value of our home upon purchasing was also less because of that Thankfully, we still live in a wonderful area. Like I said, we are close to both of our families now, and it's just more perfect than I ever could have dreamt up or imagined myself. So that we just had the perfect storm of a situation fall into our lap, and the Lord really blessed us with that. I know that that's not the reality for everyone, but I would definitely recommend looking into your options as far as downsizing and or figuring out a way to get out from such a huge mortgage or car payment. <coughs> Another thing would be thrifting. So especially for furniture. Listen, you guys, I understand like, I, I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all, I have really expensive taste. <laughs> like if I had all the money in the world and could buy anything that I wanted with no fear of what might happen to my bank account, I would not be ordering from like Wayfair or Amazon, especially for my furniture, because listen, that stuff is not made well. Things are not made the same now as they used to be. I would be going for like way more or like handcrafted Amish furniture. I wish that I could support small business like that, but I just can't. And so I go thrifting because a lot of older wooden, like truly wooden furniture is found in the thrift store and it has character. It has charm. It suits my style and it's like like i found a full-size bed the other day for 12 bucks i don't buy mattresses at the thrift store and couches you have to be very careful with but you can usually tell which ones just don't need to be purchased or brought into your home but i would definitely recommend like for bigger purchases for your home like that looking into the thrift store or estate sales yard sales possibly hand-me-downs if you have family members trying to declutter or whatever um definitely look into that And just in general, um, romanticizing home. So realizing that like we've always been the type to not really want to have like much of a nightlife or go out and do a whole bunch of social gatherings. So this wasn't really a hard swap for us, but especially with kids, it can be really tempting to want to take them and do all of the big fun things, all of the big fun outings that are not free or are not cheap. There are plenty of options for free and cheap, but there's also a lot of really fun and exciting things that cost a lot of money. And so we just have to pick and choose very carefully on those things. So we romanticize home in a big way because we'll do simple movie nights or craft days, playing out in the yard, doing a water day, you know, things like that around our house that are still super fun and allow us to have a nice change of pace and like genuine quality time without having to drain our wallets. And then number five would be you learn how to DIY. Even if you don't think you're creative, you learn. And this applies to a lot of different things. Like I said, I have expensive taste. I would love to have my hair done all the time. I would love to have my nails freshly manicured and false lashes and all of these things that would just make life simpler and make me feel like I'm more put together without having to try so hard. But 
I just do not have the one time or two money for that right now. And that's a choice that I have willingly made. Like I wanted this. So I opt for the glue on nails from the store and I do them myself. I opt for cutting my own hair and using box coloring if I want to change it up for a little bit of time. I do not say all these things to say that I do it better than professionals, but I do it in a way that I can still have those things without having to pay a ton of money, especially if it's something that has to be maintained and paid every couple of months or several times a year. And then that goes for decor as well around my home. We we learn how to make a lot of that and i like to say that you either come up with diy decor you figure out how to do it yourself and make your own or you come up with dw decor and that's do without decor like if it's one of those things where you can't make it but you can't afford it then you probably just do without and that's just my philosophy on it but it works it also encourages me to figure out how to diy it because i don't like to go without and then at the end of the day, if you just can't get on board with some of these things and the budget just doesn't look like it's going to work out with like your desired lifestyle or what you perceive as a high quality of life for you and your family, then you figure out a side hustle. I realize that technically that's no longer single income. Maybe it's reduced income. Maybe the Lord blesses it and it becomes like the sole provider of your income. Who knows? Um, but there are all these different ways nowadays, especially with technology, to bring in some extra cash each month without having to leave your home so much. And I just think that that is such a beautiful blessing of technology. There's a lot of things that it does wrong, but there are some things that it does right. And I think that the Lord is using that to empower families, to empower mothers and just investment in our own homes i just get really excited when i start to talk about that but i would say that if you cannot sacrifice or swap out some of these things then maybe stay home but consider picking up a part-time job or a side hustle of some sort and not that it's going to be easy because then you're doing that on top of basically full-time homemaking but it will allow you to do all the things that you want to do and maybe help bring clarity to what it is that actually matters most. So that's what it does for me at least. Whenever I have so many things on my plate and I just am forced to drop something, it helps me to realize what my priorities really are or maybe where they should really be. So I hope you found something encouraging or useful or maybe both from this video. I'm so glad that you chose to spend a part of your day here with me and I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you're at. I'll catch you next time. Bye guys.